a few uh, notes here today. Uh, the key code, by the way, has changed to the door back there. If you need to get in or want the key code, see me or some of the, one of the consistory members, please. Wednesday evening Bible study here at 6.30. Rummage sale starts next week. Big, big uh, happenings here. And the Vacation Bible School will be on June 10th through the 14th. And there's a silent auction for that on June 16th. That Sunday, uh, the ending of uh, Bible School. So they're looking for donations. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, also for uh, uh, donations for the, the orphanage in uh, Bogota, Colombia. You can see in the bulletin there's a whole list of different things that they need. Prime timers this week, 25th at East Side Diner. Um, and 5-5, five, five, May 5th, there's a music festival at the First Reformed UCC in Sunbury. There's going to be part of it. There's at least six groups taking part in this. Uh, if There's a mass choir going to sing. Uh, one, one, uh, one song. It's, uh, I have the music to it. A canon of praise. If you're interested... They meet, the, the program starts at 3, the mass choir will meet at 2.15. And uh, if, if you're interested, see me, I'll make sure you get some music for it. So. Any other announcements? Okay. We might have a small group this morning, but we're still going to try to meet downstairs with life group behind the kitchen. All are welcome. Um, please join us. And we will also meet upstairs with the with the uh, older older group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other announcements? Okay, let's start church with the ringing of the bell. Good morning. We gather on this fourth Sunday of Easter as we continue to celebrate the promise of the resurrection and the life everlasting that we receive through Christ Jesus, who is the great shepherd. We invite the congregation to rise as you're able as we begin with our call to worship.
Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You didn't have time. You have to do it when you get home. Okay, good. But I see who who do you bring today? All right, very good. Hey, and thank you for lighting the candles today. That was excellent, right? You got here late, but you're here. You got you're here, right? Yeah. Was mom not quite ready? Oh no. What's that? Oh, really? She said she missed her week and Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that happened. So what was the best thing that happened to you this week? The best thing that happened to you this week? What? They're, they're getting a laugh out. Was that, was that the best thing, though? The worst thing was going to my sleep oh, But the best thing was skipping, huh? Yes. Yeah. So that was fun? Uh-huh. It was fun? All right. Yeah. Now, now, they're laughing. How many of you ever skipped school? Yeah. yeah look, at, look at all the hands up there. So you're not the only one, right? But it was pretty good, huh? Good. So what was the best thing that you did all week? You skipped school too? <laughs> did, you, did Liam just give... Oh, at preschool. Did, did Liam just give you an idea, huh? No, no, no. Yeah, well, when you don't feel good, it's okay to skip, isn't it? Yeah, because... You know, you definitely won't, don't want to go to school when you're not feeling well, right? And I wasn't sick. And, but you weren't sick. Oh, you're giving us all the kind of clues to this, huh? <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, they're laughing, but most of those hands that were raised from them skipping school had nothing to do with them being sick, right? Yeah. yeah. Probably that's what happened. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I skipped school one, well, I skipped school many, many times. But I skipped school in 10th grade one time to go see an Orioles game in the afternoon, because they still played in the afternoon those days, right? And, and guess what happened? What? It was on TV. 
And it showed me sitting behind the third base dugout with two other people from school. And, and so we put down that we were sick for our excuse. But the principal, Mr. Cosgrove, knew that we were at the baseball game because it was on TV. And he saw it. So you know what my friend said to him? How would you know that we were on TV when you were supposed to be a principal at school that day? They did have school. And we called him because he was watching the baseball game. Right? So even when we skip sometimes, people will notice. Right? So we're here today. Who notices us here today? God notices us, right? And Jesus, right? So God notices us. And so can we ever skip from God? Will God always know what we're doing? Yeah, God will always know what we're doing. And God wants us to be able to share in God's blessings all the time, right? So, so next time, think about that when you're ready to skip. Oh. I just Danville at my church party. I wouldn't have gotten there in time. You wouldn't have gotten there in time. Okay. Get home, get ready, and go to church. Makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. It yeah. would just help that I would not be a Christian. Yeah. Do you think they? <laughs> do you think they get it? No. No. <laughs> well, sometimes they don't, right? But it's all, it's all good, right? Because you know what? God loves us anyway, all the time. So are we ready to pray to God? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pray. Our Father, What did you have there? I stole from you too. You did? Yes. Oh my. So, <laughs> don't you want one of these no. to take along? No, uh, I have two of them. You not only one, oh, you have two of them. There you go. All right. Hear the word of God from our first scripture reading, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the first lesson. Hear the word of God in our second lesson from 1 John. We know this, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts are not, do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and we do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides, abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit confesses that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. Little children, you are from God and have, and have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore what they say is from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. From this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Here ends today's lessons. May God bless his, the reading. Gracious Lord, we come before you on this holy day to offer our thanksgiving to you for the ways in which you have revealed yourself to us, particularly through the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you for the protection you offer to us, for your guidance for your direction. We thank you for pouring out an abundance of gifts upon us so that we may continue to glorify your name and to love one another as you love us. As we gather together on this holy day, we are reminded that we are your children and children with a purpose. And that purpose is to share the good news. And in sharing the good news, to use our gifts to reach out to the whole world. Gifts that enable us to realize that we are blessed. Gifts that motivate us to serve one another in your name. And gifts that spread your good news throughout the world. Receive our offerings that we may continue to be the church and to walk in the ways of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
in whose name we pray. Amen. Tenth chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I laid down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. And again, the Jews were divided because of these words. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. What does it mean to be a good Christian? Does it mean becoming familiar with the Bible? Knowing that when you open the Bible, the first book in the Bible is Genesis, and the last book is Revelation. Does being a good Christian mean that you know some of those other titles of books in between? Does being a good Christian mean that you read the Bible regularly and you take it to heart? Does being a good Christian mean that you give some of your income to the church and other good deeds of the church? That you contribute somehow to the mission and the ministry of the wider church. Does being a good Christian mean that you're attentive to the concerns that are going on in the world and that you participate actively in trying to promote peace and justice throughout the world? What does it mean to be a good Christian? Does it mean doing the right thing? Or at least trying to do the right thing? Does it mean that you're actively engaged in a prayer life? 
what does it mean to be a good Christian? Does it mean talking about Jesus to other people? Both people who already believe and people who have yet come to believe. What does it mean to be a good Christian? And if it is about doing the right thing, how do you know what right things to do? What does it mean to be a good Christian? I would imagine that each and every one of us probably struggle at times to try to figure out what it means to be a good Christian. Certainly, as we are gathered here on this Holy Sabbath, we gather because we want to be good Christians. But we also know that we come together from many different walks of life. We have our own experiences. And we try to discern from our own experiences what it means for us to be followers of Jesus. And how how will we know? How will we come to know that, yes, we we are getting it. Because the other reality is that there are times in each and every one of our lives when we have to admit that we're not being good Christians. And I don't mean about skipping school either. But I mean that each and every one of us at times in our lives fall short of following Jesus. And maybe, just maybe, we even think and come to believe that we have good reasons why we follow short of following Jesus. That we have other things to attend to. And other things seem to get in the way. And no matter how often we try to make excuses, we still fall short. So as we gather together on this fourth Sunday of Easter, continuing to proclaim the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come trying to be good Christians. Trying to be good Christians. While the writer of 1 John is writing to his or her church to help them to try to figure out what it means to be a good Christian. A good Christian in a world that is still filled with many, as the writer of 1 John says, many antichrists. That is, many reasons not to follow Jesus. Maybe it's because we feel we're too busy, or we don't have enough energy. Whatever those antichrists might put into our minds and our hearts. And so the writer of 1 John is writing to the church to help us discern what it might mean for us to be a good Christian. And interestingly enough, the writer of 1 John isn't talking about how many times a year we attend church. The writer of 1 John doesn't say anything about how much of our income we put towards the church and the mission of the church. 
The writer of 1 John seems to indicate that the way we can maybe get to understand what it means to be a good Christian is this. Now, are you ready for this? Are you willing to give up your life for someone else? Are you willing to give up your life for someone else? Because the writer of 1 John says, that's exactly what Jesus did. He was willing to give his life up for us. Now that might seem like a gargantuan task. To think think that that being a good Christian is being willing to give up our life for someone else. Now the writer of 1 John certainly is familiar with chapter 10 of the Gospel of John. Because Jesus has already indicated to his followers that he's willing, he's willing to give his life up for each and every one of us. That the ways of the world, the ways of the Antichrist in this world, aren't powerful enough to do to Jesus what they want done. But as Jesus says, I have the power to take my own life for you. And I also have the power to raise it up again. And so in this Easter season, we gather before a living Christ. We're not gathered before a Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago, and we simply know him by memory. But we know this Jesus because Jesus is present with us at this very moment. And He's present for us because He has revealed to us what it might mean for us to be a good Christian. What might it mean for us to be willing to lay our lives down for others? Now think about that for a moment. Jesus didn't say, When you have the opportunity, reach into your pocket and give some of your spare change to the mission of the church. Jesus didn't say, when you think of it and you're not too busy, open the Bible. But when you're not too busy. Jesus didn't say, When you're, when you're free with some time, kind of take notice of what's going on in the world. But don't let it interfere with your own agendas and your own desires. Jesus didn't say any of that. Now maybe, just maybe, the writer of First John was pushing some buttons. Maybe the writer of 1 John was trying to get under our skin. To irritate some nerves. Maybe the writer of 1 John was intending to throw all this out to get us to notice. That the children of God, and the writer of 1 John calls us children of God because that's rightfully who we are, the writer of 1 John might have been trying to kind of gather the attention of a church that was beginning to lose interest. Maybe the writer of 1 John was trying to get the attention of a church who was too busy doing other things than to be in the church. Maybe the writer of 1 John 
was saying the things that were said because the church was starting to become comfortable with itself and comfortable with its place in the world. Maybe, maybe the writer of 1 John was trying to get our attention because the writer realized that even in the church, the church was giving room for the Antichrist. And so we have to think about all those things of what it might be for us to be the church today. Do we find ourselves too busy with other things than to follow Jesus in the way that Jesus would want us to follow? Do we find ourselves believing that the way that Jesus would want us to follow is just too demanding and we don't have the energy for it? Have we come to believe that when Jesus says, no, to, no greater love hath anyone than being willing to lay your life down for someone else? That that's just too big for us? Too much for us to handle? Now, I don't believe, I don't believe that Jesus intentionally wants us to suffer. Because Jesus, his focus wasn't on death, but his focus was on life and life everlasting. His focus was on, on peace and what it might take for us to be attentive to God's will and God's will for peace. Jesus wanted, wanted us to be attentive to the needs and the concerns of those around us. Particularly those who suffer in any way. And how might we respond? How might we respond to this gift that God has granted to us in the presence of the risen Christ? We decided it would be a good idea to dwell in our hearts, to live amongst us, and to reveal to us God's will. What sacrifices are we willing to make not so much that we advance our careers, but that we increase our possessions, or that we raise our bank accounts. But what might it mean for us to engage in this sacrificial life that understands how much God loves us. How much Jesus did for us and continues to do for us so that we can truly say we are children of God. That we can truly understand that the way of life isn't really about self-preservation, really isn't about providing all the comfort we can get so that we don't have to face the struggles that others might face. But this truth and this love that Jesus was talking about was about opening our eyes and our ears so that we can see, see the world as it is. 
to be able to identify all those antichrists. And again, First John uses the plural, these antichrists that are in the world that would seem to say, drink and be merry. Don't worry at all about the other. Grab all the gusto you can get. Make sure you're living the life you want to live. But we don't read that in First John. We read in First John that we, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, now have the power and the authority and the capability and the ability to live as Jesus wants us to live. For as Christians, to be a good Christian is to know we have all the hope in this world. We know that those who are opposed to Jesus do not have the power, do not have the power nor the authority to get rid of Jesus. But because we are the church, because we are gathered together by the power of Jesus Christ, we now, we now know what it means to love like Jesus loved. We now know what it means to understand the extent of that love. Because that love that Jesus gives to us is a love that knows no end. The love that Jesus gives to us knows that even though we may be willing to lay our lives down for others, we know that Jesus will also raise us to life and life everlasting. That is the truth. The way, and the way that Jesus has shown to us. And therefore, as the writer of 1 John suggests, because we know that love, we can exemplify that love in the way that Jesus exemplified that love. Because we will be able to look out into the world and see it as it is and know that it isn't the way that God desires for the world to be in its brokenness, in its suffering, and its separation. For as Jesus himself said, I know my sheep and they know me. And Jesus further says, I will go and find more sheep so that in the end, there will be one flock. A flock that knows Jesus' voice, knows each other's voices, and know that the way of life is life and life everlasting. As we come together as the people of God, as children of God, we come to know that we are indeed blessed in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you notice our sign out front, it is a sign that, in a sense, one of the greatest things about Easter is the gift of hope. So I ask you, what is your hope? And again, that's not rhetorical. We hope to have some responses. What is your hope? There we go. I 
I'm not sure I ruined her. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. And it won't be fair to say ditto. What is your hope? You could be here for a long time today. Um, a lot of respect for what God has given us and also to really respect the environment that God has, you know, provided for us to um, nurture it better than what we've been. That we can overcome hatred. Hey, Scott. Love one another. Be forever thankful. I don't think I can ever count as high as what the blessings I've been given. Now that we've talked about hope, what are your joys? I think Joan and I can both agree that our joy this past week was being in Benzette for four days and seeing elk and deer and wild turkeys that actually talked a lot during the night and in the morning. <laughs> morning. And it was just, just to be in, you could tell that you were definitely in God's country. I mean, and the beautiful animals. I mean, and then to think that we go and shoot them. But anyhow, um. <laughs> But they're provided for us, you know what I mean? Just to enjoy and to um, be fed from. And uh, it was just a great time. I mean, we, just, we were just really all in awe with everything because we, did not, we, we didn't expect to see as many wild animals as we did. And it was just, just a blessing to know that they're still out there. You know, they're just surrounded by them. It was just, just a great experience. And if anybody ever has an opportunity to do that, I recommend that you do that because it was just really wonderful. Matter of fact, we enjoyed it so much, we're going to do it again next year. All right. Scott Beckers has a joy. With uh, some of the recent tragedies we've had in our community that we do live in a community that uh, even though we have our differences really come together and support one another and families in um, in light of just horrendic horrendous uh, tragedies so thanks for a community that that we do live in other joys And what changes would you like to see in this world this week? Sorry, this is a funny one. Um, I'd like to clean my house out for the rubbish sale. <laughs> Others? <laughs> what other changes would you like to see? Everybody say ditto to that one. Yeah. Yeah. What other changes would you like to see happen in this world?
that politics don't take our freedoms away. Other changes? Well, thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, as you gather us together on this holy day, help us to be ever mindful of your presence in our lives. Help us to be ever mindful of your will for us and help us to be ever thankful for all the gifts that you have given to us so that we may follow our Lord and Savior that we may live and love like he lives and loves and that we are able to do which you would have us do to bring peace upon all. Help us to do our part to bring an end to the hate and the suffering that goes on in this world. Help us to silence the voices of the Antichrist seem to get in our ear too often. Help us to search out for the lost and the forsaken. Help us to embrace with sacrificial love all those whom we are called to care for. Help us to be the kind of people you would have us be. Help us to move beyond our own comforts and our own pleasures so that we will bring your word and your love to the whole world. Help us not to forget about anybody in need. Help us to be attentive to their concerns. Help us to realize that, as Jesus said, we are one flock. So help us to hear the voice of Jesus each and every day of our lives. Guide us in the way of your truth. And direct us on those paths in which we can find ways to help one another. There is so much suffering that goes on in this world. And sometimes as the churches seem more empty, our prisons get filled up. Our hospitals get filled. Our extended care facilities get filled. So help us to do our part to bring healing and hope to all. Help us to remember those who are dear to us, who are facing their own illnesses, our own surgeries and our own separations. And help us to keep them close, not only in our hearts and in our minds, but help us to keep all close to us 
so that we may be able to reach out and bring healing and hope. We pray at this hour for Salisa, Linda, and Dolores, and Jeff, Mary Lou, and Brian, Cameron and Joan, Tony and Joan, Mary and Maggie, and all who are in need of your love and care, particularly the love and care that comes through us. Because with you, healing and hope is possible. We also pray for those families who have been touched by death. We entrust into your eternal care all those who have gone before us. We pray that you would be with the families and friends of the Lapp family, of Karen, of Reese, and all others whom we name before you. So that during this Easter season, truly know of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus and the promised resurrection for us. Knowing that death is not the last word. Death is not an eternal separation. And help us this day as always to be the church children of God, that cares for all of creation, that with tenderness and love, we reach out not only to the human community, but throughout creation, that we may address it with wonder and hope. Help us to clean up our lives so that we will be able to make your whole creation that which you intended to be when you created it and called it good. Help us to do whatever is possible to be the kind of people you call us to be and to be able to follow Jesus wherever it might be that our Lord leads us this day and into tomorrow. And help us to rejoice in hope. And as we rejoice in hope, help us to know that we are empowered to love as you love. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And at this time, we invite the congregation to rise as you're able, as we sing, He Leadeth Me.
seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Continually feed us and heal us and let us love as you love. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us everlasting peace.